Who has a burn in here? A scratch? A scar? Wow, oof. Okay, scar team, let's go. So, my story is about in the 19 years that I've lived so far, I've gotten so many injuries where I, I stopped keeping track. I stopped counting. I just accepted them as it is. It hurts a lot. It really does. You can either put cold, Colgate toothpaste, run ice cold water on it, put frozen towel, or pretend it's not there because that's the best thing to do, right? Sometimes you can look and you can see a scar that wasn't there and now it's there and you don't know what to do. When I was 15, I was cooking before I had my chef skills here at school taught to me. I was rinsing fish on a hot skillet. And you know what happens with oil and water, right? I didn't put the fish away from me, but towards me. And if you could see me on that day, I was like in a mirror right here. My whole chest felt like the, the devil himself slapped my chest. Even before that, I was six when I was scorched with oil. My sister was cooking chorizo for me. My dad laughed. My mother helped. But in the end, he comforted me in my pain to sleep. Ever since that, I was bound to deal with wildfires on the landscape of my suntan skin. I don't know what it is with me and burns, but I would never forget the pains that I've dealt with throughout the years. Traumatic or not, I learned to deal with them. I learned the research behind the skin and how it heals you without you telling it no. Because basically your, your skin is a hospital. The only difference is it doesn't pay anyone. It does the job no matter what. When I was 18, a year ago, I was on a roof with my dad working. The shingles were three feet long and one foot wide. And as you can imagine, March through the summer, it was 120 over. We had to wear pants thick as polar bears and hats wide as palm trees, but that didn't stop me from getting burned. The broiling sun was so intense, it melted the black coating on my gloves. I looked at my dad and he looked at me and we both smiled as if, it's nothing to worry about, it's nothing but I couldn't complain. I knew deep down it hurted him as much as it hurted me. When I was 17, my mom was cooking tortillas on a flat iron top. My, let's say, oblivious self decided, hey, it seems cold. I placed my hand on it. I didn't make tortillas for two days. A second degree scold felt like the devil himself gave me a high five. It was the worst pain in my life. And she slapped me for it because she told you, she told me it was hot. I didn't listen to her. When I was 13, I experienced my first heat exhaustion. My mother, she slapped me that day because she told me to stay hydrated. During the workout, I told myself, no pain, no gain. She replied as if she read my mind, you'll get the pain you need to gain. I believed her ever since that. And to this day, she is still, still telling me to stay hydrated, no matter what. There were unforgettable moments where I still remember every detail about a scar, a tissue, that broke away because it felt like I could end up in a hospital bed at any moment. I have almost 10 scars on my leg, tatted. No charge, 
Life said. I can keep track of every single one and tell a story to you. I could go on and on and on about how I dealt with it and how I kept my pain inside because that's the best thing to do, right? Pain is a necessity. Pain is also very, very traumatic. My dad has told me countless times that when I was a kid, I used to go outside without shoes and he would stop me before I went out. Unless I had shoes, I would, could not go out. Me as a kid craving to play, sneak out the back door and hopefully he didn't see me or out the window. One time when I was 13, the same year I burned myself a sheep pan was laid out in the grass that I didn't see and I almost ripped my Achilles tendon. I had 13 stitches that day and again my mother slapped me. <laughs> my dad did too for not putting on shoes. Ever since that, I put on shoes every time I went outside. My parents, they couldn't deal with me. Sometimes they would say, I don't know how they did it. I don't know why they told me all these things. But I knew that through experience, maybe I'll get somewhere. Maybe pain called my name too many times on a list and I stood up too many times during its speech. There were times where I felt like I could give up at any moment, at any time. I didn't know what to do. There were times where my parents weren't home and I would knock myself out because I would play too much with my brother or I would play too much with other things that I was not supposed to play with and completely, completely give up right there and then. I would sometimes feel like I was dying. I would sometimes feel like I am still dying because those traumatic events are stuck with me. I tell people when they see my scars, yeah, I know. I should have done this. I should have done that. Didn't you see it, they said? No. How a few months ago, I got burned by a 400 degree oven door on my left elbow, barely a month in into my job. They asked me for work compensa comp compensation. I said, no, it's okay. I'm a big boy. I should have taken it. <laughs> a few weeks after that, I took a sheep pan out of that same oven with cauliflower on it. Put it in the kitchen window. Things were moving so fast. I reached for the utensils in the kitchen, in the sink below the kitchen window. And next thing you know, I got Harry Potter marks on my forehead. And for two months, they called me Harry Potter Mexican. <laughs> That's the kitchen, they told me. That's the way it goes. And now through those experiences, I realized that no matter what, somehow I didn't give up. I didn't complain. I didn't tell myself, you know what, you should quit. You know what, you should just leave. You know what, just go into the hospital and they'll take care of you because your mom's olive oil wasn't good enough. I told myself countless times, it'll be okay, it'll be fine. And countless times, more than ever, I was kinda right. Other times I was not. I seen others with scars and tissues that are deformed and broken 
like when they look at others who are perfectly fine without any blemishes, any bruises. I have too many to count, too many to show, but I can express myself freely because I know I, accept, I accepted him as the way they are, as the way I have been through it. Because I've dealt with them and I didn't give up in the end. I kept going and going no matter what. And not just physically, but mentally, spiritually. They're still in my mind revolving and cycling like a cinema over and over and over and over. Every time I get one, all of them come out and tell me, welcome to the club. Pain, like I said, is a necessity. You don't like it, I don't like it. But it can lead you in the right way to mend others who deal with it every day or it can lead you in the wrong way and pass it along because you're oblivious to what others can handle. My mom told me one time, if you ever get punched in the face, don't go straight towards it. Flow with it. Turn the other cheek. I asked her, what about your slaps? <laughs> she did this to me. Don't run away. My father is still working in the roofing installment. Brand new houses with him on top. Since the market's back on its feet, he tells me, it never is easy. It will never be easy. No matter how much you tell yourself, it's always harder each day and every day. But that's the fun part. I still don't know what he means by that. What's so fun about it? Most of the time, I laugh. I reminisce, I ponder about what burn am I gonna get on my body next? No matter how alert I am, no, how much, no, no matter how much keen I have in my eye, anything can happen in life. And I say to myself, you're turning 20. You're about to hit a pinnacle, what other 20-year-olds say, that it's gonna go by like that. Next thing you know, you're 27, you're 37, with kids, and a wife, and a house, and a mortgage, and oh gosh. I'm not afraid, but I am excited. I'm still in pain. But I smile because that's the best thing to do. Because Colgate toothpaste is your best friend for at least 17 years. I just want to say, don't give up. Even when someone burns you, scars you, scratches you, it's not the end. It will never be able to be. Life goes on, and will always go on. Thank you so much.